Hey guys, less than two weeks until the Halloween witchcraft workshop. If you haven't checked out what we're going to be doing, you really need to because it's going to be a lot of fun. Link in the description. I hope to see you there. Well, just coming to mind is something like Alzheimer's or dementia. Obviously, mm -hmm. those people, you know, the person mm -hmm. who's afflicted with that is not in control. Where do you think their soul is? Um, who is? I was talking to somebody on YouTube, I think, asking about coma patients. And of course, I've been in a coma and I have some observations about that. And then folks with just severe disorientation, such as Alzheimer's or dementia, mm -hmm. um, because some of these people have this state for a long time, you know, a long time of like severe disorientation. Where do you think their soul is while they're spending two years with Alzheimer's completely out of it? What do you, what is your perception of that? Well, I don't, I mean, I think if their soul connects back to the body, then it's almost like a, like the silver cord was put on pause mm -hmm. and there's still animation to the physical body because the physical body doesn't need the consciousness in mm -hmm. order to operate. Uh, spirit showed me once that it's kind of like if you park your car in the driveway and it still has sufficient gas in it and you put it in park, it's going to keep running for a while, even though there's no driver in there, no one turned it off. So there's life force energy that's running the physical mm -hmm. body, but there's no driver in it. So I don't know if the body, I think in cases where there's Alzheimer's dementia or something like that, where they're going in and out, I guess I, I'm imagining the silver cord being kind of like just static, like fuzzing in and out, and maybe they just sit back. So I don't think the soul goes anywhere. I think just the connection to the physical expression is hmm. kind of coming in and out in your, in your, but people report in coma though, they're aware, just not mm -hmm. capable of responding. What was your mm -hmm. coma like? Were you aware? Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. uh, disoriented. I was aware of everything that was happening. For example, when the nurses would come in and they would do the things that they would do. Um, I, <clears throat> I was aware of that, but in my mind, it was a story that I was telling myself. I was, mm -hmm. and I, I believed I was in Maui. I believed my brother was with me as opposed to my husband at the time. I believe I could hear the ocean and, um, that I thought that they were, these nurses were my best friends, you know, that came over every day to talk with me and spend time with me. And it was, I was displaced in time as well, but everything that was happening, I loosely tracked with. So, and I also, my husband was I think I think he was reading Snow Falling on Cedars to me at the time as well and playing Hawaiian music, which is why I probably thought mm -hmm. I was in, in Maui at the time. But it all just kind of wove into a fourth dimensional mm -hmm. kind of astral experience. Um, and it was it was but I definitely heard him. Mm -hmm. I definitely knew what was going on. I just I wasn't clear, wasn't mm -hmm. clear. That's fascinating. Yeah. But my soul was with the body. My yeah. soul was with the body. But with, with some folks with Alzheimer's. I perceive them as being like up in yeah. heaven. Yeah. But totally. I perceive the the tethered cord mm -hmm. and and they can use that cord to actually travel back to the body and, and have moments of lucidity or moments of animation, you know, consciousness really. But a lot of times they're just not even there. But they're not like floating out in in fourth dimensional haunted right. landscape. They're like a partying and they're there already and they're like, "Oh, right. still attached to that thing?" Okay. <laughs> yeah, and and I think that especially with like Alzheimer's and dementia, where there are um, it's almost like there are fractals that show up of them that are not mm -hmm. so they don't have memory, but they may like I don't know strike out or something like that. So it's almost like echoes of just four D things, things that they've welcomed in, and then yeah, more fuller expression of their soul will show up every now and again through that silver cord. Yeah, yeah, and when my mom was dying. And I would visit her in her hospice room. She was right there in the room, like in the corner, just kind yeah. of watching while her body just while her body was there. I don't think she could have bopped into 5D though until she passed. So it was yeah. a different situation with dementia and Alzheimer's. And I didn't know what your thought was about that yeah. and perception and state. My dad, when he was dying, so he had what would what ended up being his final stroke like event. And he actually hit his head too as he collapsed. And so he was in the hospital and when he got to the hospital and I was remote to the situation, I was, he's in Texas, I'm here. And, um, and they had him on whatever medication they would have had him on too. And he was probably physically with in withdrawals. Cause he was in, I mean, he had a, he had DTs by 5.00 AM every morning. So um, Whoa. he re literally did even when I was a kid. From the so night I, before mm -hmm. drinking the night before he had DTs by 5.00 AM. He woke Whoa. up at 5.00 AM. Okay. Like, <sighs> 
Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we had in Texas and Tarrant County, uh, it was, at least when I was growing up, it was dry, dry County until noon. And Sunday morning was like r- on Sundays <laughs> only just on Sunday mornings until right. noon. Cause that makes alcoholics go to church, you right. know, removing. It's, still, it's still the same here. It's still the same. It is. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so he had DTs really severely every Sunday morning. And my sweet husband's like, why didn't he save some? I'm like, yeah, self-discipline, not so much high priority for a man of this advanced disease. <laughs> but anyway, when he was um, when he was in the hospital for his final, uh, you know, for his, do- for his death, um, at first when I tapped in with him, he was in the room. Uh, his body was clearly, you know, he was in a coma or whatever. But he was having a party because his mother was there and his dad was there. And he was like, baby girl, they're all here. Well, oh, you know what I mean? Like he was just mm-hmm. so happy that his family was there and he wasn't really. And I think he was also because his body was drugged. He was a, picking up on that a little bit, mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. a little high and it was feeling mm-hmm. good. And he's just talking to me about everybody being there because they were like going, come on, honey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then, you know, the next time that I was with him, he was like, he realized he couldn't go back into his body. He Mm -hmm. couldn't. And Mm -hmm. so he was freaking out. Mm. And, um, and so then, yeah, eventually I walked him across. Yeah. You had to help him. Yeah. And he crossed before his body was expired. That was when I kind of like really understood. I mean, I was positive that he crossed before his body Mm -hmm. expired. I remember you talked to me, you, you, Mm -hmm. you reached out and talked to me. And then they, they, more or less pulled the plug, you know, they don't, they, they, yeah. they give them a push of medication to push them over the edge, which apparently right. they do. They euthanize frequently. Right. They just don't talk about it. Right. So another thing along these lines, if you want to hear, I also uh, you know, ter- her- heard me t- tell the story of Maury the tortoise that I, um, animal communication, uh, talked to one of his first tortoise I ever talked to. I and, do love a tortoise. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. <laughs> and it was early on, it was still me doing my internship and this was someone who was a, a fellow development circle um, student and her her tortoise Maury I went you know was going to communicate with him and he was in hibernation she's like can you can you communicate with him and he's hibernating I'm like I don't know <laughs> I've never connected with a tortoise before <laughs> let alone a hibernating being tapped in and he was like sure this is actually a fantastic time because this is when I do so much of my soul work I'm like, oh, like I love it. I mean? Yeah. And he was talking about floating off in the astral and doing all kinds of things. But then he also showed me he could go deep into his hibernating body and feel, is it feel deep rest and mm. almost like be buzzed out entirely, like kind of enjoy the quiet of a deep hibernation, which is almost like a coma, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Morty the Torty. Yeah. I oh, like him. He's the best. <laughs> cool. The Lightshine Development Circle is a sacred place for spiritual seekers to practice giving and receiving readings. The circle is open to all psychics, oracle card readers, mediums, channels, energy healers, Akashic Records readers, and any other type of spiritual practitioner who offers their service via a reading style format. If you're ready to awaken your gifts and talents and fine tune your intuitive abilities, we'd love to have you in the circle. 